Hey guys, I had some good feedback from the Pierce comb honey cutter video that I did. I uh, read through the comments. I had several people asking about a comb honey series, so we're going to start that today. Um, beekeeping, it's important to remember with beekeeping that it's chess and not checkers. So I would love to be able to put out more in the bees videos right now but for what i have going on in my operation right now is mostly prep work so it's very important to be prepared for your flows uh for what you have next and be not just a reactionary beekeeper um, everything you do your your manipulations you're trying to be purposeful with those so for me, when the splitting season starts and then we transition directly into the honey flow, there's not a lot of time. I don't like to do this late winter uh, preparing my comb honey supers because they are delicate. Um, it's fragile stuff and it's expensive. So, you know, you're not wanting to waste your time and effort. So late winter uh, is ideal for me to start prepping my supers and have them staged and ready to go on bees. Uh, comb Honey Foundation is what I use. It's thin surplus and it is very fragile. Uh, you either want to order that before it turns cold or wait until late winter, early spring when your temperatures have stabilized that they can ship it to you. Uh, if you go ahead and order it and they ship it to you during the winter, you really run the risk of damaging the wax. And it's not inexpensive. Um, a 25-pound box is going to run you probably $270 um, ballpark. So, you know, it's, it's not insignificant. So you want that to be in good shape and pliable and not bouncing around in a truck and getting shattered all to pieces. So I'm going to give you some feedback first uh, on the equipment I use and why I use it. Um, you can use any kind of equipment you want to make comb honey. Um, there's no set rules. For me, I prefer a shallow super. I run all medium six and five eight supers for my extracting supers but i don't have any extracting comb that is shallow all of my shallows the frames are mostly replaced every year uh, and they never get extracted so there's no confusion in those when i first started out i ran shallows and deeps uh, when i moved to west tennessee i started transitioning to the medium or Illinois super because it was just more cost effective. It costed roughly the same to purchase a shallow as it did a medium. So it just made more sense and the flows were longer and stronger here. So a medium was a better choice. So I started phasing out the shallows as I did. I saved the shells and I use these now strictly for my comb honey. So shallows, why the shallow? So with a shallow frame, most of your comb honey containers, the four by four and the two by four, they fit these perfectly. Uh, if you use, I say perfectly, but very tightly rather, they fit these very tightly. Um, if you use a medium frame, you're going to end up with a good strip left over. The strip of comb for a lot of people is considered waste. For me, it's waste. Um, it's not wide enough to use for chunk honey, really, to make an attractive product. And uh, if you're not intending to leave that strip as a comb guide, then it, it really is a waste. So... For the shallow frame, it, it's really much more fitted. You can get roughly seven cuts of the half cuts and uh, a good four cuts if it's a nice frame of the four by four cuts. So 
I have these special made. You still you could buy these. This is just a, a shallow frame, but it has a thin grooved top bar. And a solid bottom bar. It's a very simple light frame. In comparison to your typical wedge or groove top bar, it's considerably thinner. It doesn't look like much, but that thin top bar gives you a little more clearance when you're making your cuts and makes things easier and simpler. Now they quit making that top bar in these style frames, uh, to my knowledge. I didn't find anyone for a while, uh, some time back. I began making my own. I'm no carpenter. So I just put them between the ears. And this caused a little burring out. But it wasn't a real problem for me. It just wasn't ideal. I met a beekeeper and beekeeping equipment manufacturer at the Memphis area beekeeper short course. His name was Skipper Luttrell, is Skipper Luttrell. He lives in Lawrence County, Tennessee. He's a smaller scale beekeeper and woodenware manufacturer. And he agreed to build me these custom frames. So I ordered a, a thousand from him assembled. And I'm very pleased with the quality and the style of the frame. So that's why shallows for me. Um, another, a couple other things about a shallow. It is just a little bit smaller than the medium, but I feel like with a shallow being smaller, you're better able to capture a shorter flow. Like uh, some of these natural honey flows. Uh, I say natural, I mean natural forage like trees black locust, uh, things of that nature in comparison with uh, a row crop. Typically your row crop honey flows are more extended and more forgiving. Uh, with your natural honey flows, they, they can tend to be short and they can be cut off by the weather much more easily than, uh, than row crop honey flows. So for me, a shallow honey super is just that much better in capturing the flow quickly because the frames are smaller. They can finish out those combs faster because that's really where it is at with comb honey is getting those combs finished out quickly and off the bees. So that's another reason for the shallows. Um, you may like to use the mediums you have uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can even use deeps if you so choose. Just bear in mind that if you're using a deep frame, it takes much longer for them to fill it out and to finish it. And the cappings are really where it's at in marketing your comb money. People love to see the white, beautiful, full cappings. Uh, funny story, you may notice the S on some of my shallow supers uh, i just mentioned that i used to run mixed supers i ran shallows when i came down here uh, i started mixing in the mediums after getting with my mentor robert Hodel. so i painted up these boxes and i thought i was really smart i wanted to keep them separate from the mediums i made my little stencil and i put s's on all my shallows and i'll never forget Robert coming out to the bee yard with me and he asked me what was all those S's for and it really ripped me a new one he said what does S stand for stupid can't tell the difference between a shallow and a medium so uh, it was just giving me a hard time it was pretty funny to me and still is uh, he's a very good natured guy likes to joke a lot and I'm probably going to uh put S's on all of them just for nostalgia because it, it's a funny story to me. You may also notice a little difference in some of these boxes. Some of these boxes 
or drawing a blank on the name uh, fingered corners but most of these are rabbits so I prefer a rabbited box you expose less end grain and they're much easier to repair you may notice a little bit of difference here in the bottom you can see where I cut it out slapped it back on it's a very simple cut on a table saw and it's easy to do some of these it's at the bottom a lot of these it's at the frame rest so it's a a little more sustainable for me I'm I don't have the carpentry skill to cut out these box joints and for me being able to just rip a repair piece off on the on the table saw and put it back on and extend the life of my boxes is important to me. Um, I mentioned Mr. Skipper Latrell. Uh, Mr. Latrell, he built his boxes with the with the rabbit joint. They are plenty strong. Uh, I can jump up and down on them just the same as with these, and I find that they rot much much slower i really don't have any rotted uh rabbit joined boxes um it's just it comes down to the end grain especially here in this this very humid area so back to comb honey and the frame differences um you do not have to use thin top bars you can use wedge style for your foundation you can use foundationless you can use grooved um, I prefer grooved because they're a little simpler but when I have wedge style I just weld the foundation in the same so if you don't intend to sell the frames you can leave a strip as your comb guide if you do this I do recommend leaving a little on the corners because the bees really want to cross comb sometimes and it can be a real pain so that's the biggest downfall for foundationless comb honey um, I really don't have the time to go through the number of supers that I run fighting with the bees to keep the comb straight if you're just running a few and you're in your hives more frequently uh, that may be the option you want to go with but for me i like to use foundation again uh, you can when you're cutting it that would be a plus for them for the mediums if you're doing it on a smaller scale uh, to leave your strip at the top you do have to be careful when you use comb honey like that when you're making your cuts you want to make sure that you're clearing that old comb with your cutter uh, it can make an unsightly portion on your comb uh, and again that's what it's all about with with comb honey it's a natural product but it's beautiful and you want a beautiful product if you're reusing if you're reusing your frames then you're going to cut it all out melt it down you're left with build up like this from the cut and you need to clean that groove out most beekeeping supply companies sell these Daydant is one that can be different lengths This is a frame cleaner. It fits down in the groove and it's offset so that you don't scrape your knuckles. For me, I am heavy handed. Um, even when I don't mean to be, it's just something that, that I struggle with a little bit. But you can see right here, there's movement there. And it'll tend to do that. 
And for me, that can cause irritation over a long day on your hands. So a very simple fix for that is just electrical tape. Go in tight around the broken joint area and bind it up good. Uh, then wrap and wrap and wrap and you're good to go. And it's much more comfortable tool for me. You're also going to want to keep a wire brush on hand. A wire brush is excellent in cleaning frames. Uh, I store a lot of my equipment outside in the elements and you'll get a little darkness on the wood. A wire brush, a couple strokes like that and you bring it back to life. Another tool you may want to consider if you're cleaning up your frames in the grooves is a heat gun. This one's from Harbor Freight. It, it works very well. You'll just run it along your groove and soften that wax up. If you can, store those frames somewhere a little bit warmer so that it's not quite so cold. Uh, you wouldn't think so, but it can be very tedious work cleaning out these grooves. So much so that uh, that's why I like to buy new frames for my comb honey production. I am doing it on a little bit larger of a scale. So for me, I pay uh, a little over in bulk, you know, I'm paying a little over a dollar a frame assembled. Uh, the amount of time that it takes me to assemble or to even clean these frames is not worth it business wise for me. Uh, they also become kind of stained from the weather. And for me, I'm not only just selling comb honey in those cuts, those four by four cuts, those two by four cuts. I sell most of my comb honey bulk in the frame. Uh, my customers, I feel like they're paying a premium price for this comb honey and it's a beautiful product i want it in in a in a beautiful frame so that's one thing uh, that i do that doesn't necessarily need to be replicated by everyone if you're doing this on a hobby scale or you're solely uh cutting your comb out and not doing any any whole comb cells then you may want to recycle your frames uh if you're doing it on a hobby scale then time really isn't that big of deal for you so you can you can clean these frames up so uh one other note on cleaning those frames up when you're cleaning them up do it over a pan or your wax pot or what have you because all that little bit of wax that you you pull out of there it, it adds up and you can use that to weld in your foundation so i use a lot of wax to weld in my foundation. I save back my wax that I'm not as happy with the color, maybe the darker stuff or something that's not quite as clean. That's the wax that I use for welding in the comb honey foundation. Uh, you can use the brightest stuff you got. You can use whatever, really. It just needs to be natural beeswax moving on from the frames to the foundation if you choose to use the foundation i recommend thin surplus this is very thin wax for comb honey, you want thin, clean wax because nobody wants to chew on that thick, brewed foundation. It's like cardboard. Uh, it's unpleasant for your customer. So, ideally, thinner or no foundation is the best for comb honey that's being consumed. It's much more pleasant uh, and it's a better product. For me, 
I use shallow frames as I stated, but I use medium, medium foundation. I cut my medium foundation in half. So in a 25 pound bulk box of thin surplus foundation, I think it's roughly 400 sheets. I'll double that to 800. So there's 800 frames from there. There's a, a multitude of reasons that I do this. And I will get to those with you shortly. So basically, it's just a half sheet. This makes a two and three quarters wide sheet. This is five and five eighths wide as a medium sheet. A shallow thin surplus foundation sheet is four and three quarters. I believe four and three quarters. So again, I cut this down to two and three quarters. So we'll get to the why. The why is if you use a full sheet of foundation in a comb honey frame and it butts up against the bottom or in the groove, when the bees start working and attaching and building out this comb, they put a bow in it and that causes problems. So when you're working your shallow comb honey supers, the point is to get it done quickly. So there are manipulations that need to be made. A lot of times you go in, you pull the center frames, place them on the outside, put the outsides on the insides. You may do some reversing because for me, I run full supers of comb honey. Some guys, they like to put comb honey in the center and have accidental comb honey, just something that they can pull out and cut up and, and sell off. Um, I use whole supers, and the point for me is to get the whole super ready at the same time. To do that, you have to make those manipulations. It takes a little more time, but I'm willing to do that. So that's why having a bow is a real pain when, when you're running full comb honey supers. That bow, when you go to pull that frame out, you can damage the comb beside of it. They won't fit in the correct spots because I'm running 10 frames, 10 frames in the comb honey box. If you run less than 10 frames and you're cutting your combs to go in these two by four and four by four containers, then they can become too thick for the container. And it makes a really messy product and unattractive and it, you may just not even be able to fit it in the container. So you want to run 10 frames and you want them to be straight. So when you trim this, the weight of the bees pulls it down straight. Um, this was brought to my attention by Michael Palmer and his comb honey video. I've watched it so many times and learned a lot from it. Blending that video with knowledge from some of the older beekeepers in the Memphis area um, is really how I came to my comb honey process. I don't do things um, exactly like Michael, but I was able to pick up uh, a lot of really good tips and that is one of them he trims off a small strip from a shallow sheet of foundation and he built a jig to do that i built a jig that simply a way to lay out your Lay out your full sheets. I'll stack up five or so because that gives a super. And they go like that. This is a template, foundation template, two and three quarter. 
it'll butt up square. Then I just use a utility knife, come in sort of to the side. Then I have my half sheet. So when I stack these half sheets, I always make sure to put the uncut side when I'm stacking them all the same way. I make a pretty clean cut with the utility blade, but often it may raise up a little bit. And that can be a problem when you're installing the foundation into the groove of the shallow frame or medium frame, whatever frame you're using. So that makes things uh, simpler and easier because it's definitely not a quick process. So every little thing that you can do in that regard helps. So that's just a little jig from uh, scrap wood to give myself a consistent cut every time. It really doesn't matter that much but I'm trying to get the most that I can out of the sheets of foundation. So that's the other reason for me. So I want straight combs. That's one reason. It's cheaper for me. That's two reasons. The third reason is that my customers um, are predominantly Middle Eastern. There's a huge Middle Eastern community in the Memphis area. And they really like a more natural comb so compromising with my customers needs and my own I can't run purely foundationless but I can compromise with uh, a slightly larger starter strip uh, the bees will chew this down and they'll bring it down and they, they'll create more of a natural looking comb that's what my customers want and that's why I try to give that to them So you still have a little bit of room when you're running 10 new frames in a super. So that's some of the whys. We'll get on to uh, how I fix that in since I prefer a groove top bar. I would have loved to have shown you this device uh, as I was getting it prepared for this video, I did lose the tube uh, down into my wax tank. Uh, this is a Kelly's product. It's a wax tube fastener. It'll have a, roughly a six inch tube pinched off at the end with a tiny hole left. I'm not a big fan of this product. A lot of guys are, a lot of old timers are. So the way that it works is this tube, you submerge it in your wax and there's a hole in the stem that you'll place your finger over. Kind of like when you do it with a straw. And you pull it out and you'll hold it and then as you release the pressure with your finger, it applies. So I widened, it, it comes with just a pinhole from the factory. I widened mine out with a drill bit um, I still wasn't satisfied with it. Uh, as you can see right here, the wax builds up in it. Uh, it's good to take you a little pair of channel locks with a frame nail and have it handy if you're using one of these because you're going to have to keep unplugging it. Uh, it is a traditional tool. I think it's kind of neat. I, I think there's a lot of room for improvement there. So uh, any of you innovators out there that, that want to improve that, let me know what you come up with. I'd be happy to try it out. So my preferred tool for affixing the wax, welding the wax, is just a bent tablespoon. 
it works great. Um, you may want to keep a couple on hand because there is one at the bottom of that tank right now as well. Uh, you can just go to Goodwill, uh, Family Dollar, anywhere you want. Any kind of cheap metal tablespoon is going to work. Put a little crook in it and I leave it on the rim. Uh, I use my cappings melter because it's convenient for me. I will fill it however full it needs to be of water to bring my wax up up high so that I don't have to reach and burn myself on the outside of it. So if I'm using one block like this or two blocks or whatever, if I have to fill it three quarters with water just to, to bring that level up, that's fine with me. Most uh, hobbyists and even other guys, they may not use this style. What you can use is a crock pot again from goodwill uh, you could use a hot plate with a coffee can um, there's a number of things that, that you can use you just need to keep your wax hot i built this jig here uh, modeling it after Michael Palmer's it's a little bit different uh, I built mine to hang on the wall what it does is you uh, you make the insert the size of the inside of the frame slightly smaller mounted to a board uh, the frame rests on the bottom it keeps the foundation from flexing up against it it, it works well if I have someone else doing this for me, i probably have them using it. Uh, I still prefer the way that I do it, uh, which is just free-handed over my pot. I think for you guys to be able to see, I'm going to have to... move my tank very carefully to the side here I think what I'll do is just move my table here and step to the side So it's one thing to get set up to work. It's another thing to get set up uh, to do a video so that you can see the angles and see what I got going on. So just um, set things up to be comfortable for you and what you have going on. Uh, it may take a couple times to setting things up and moving things around, but you want it to be as quick a process as you can if you're doing a lot of these. So like I said, I use the uncut end, which I had the wrong end there. I place it in the groove. And I hold it with one hand. So it fits in like this. You can see it's in the groove. So I pop it in the groove and I hold it. I support it like this. Uh, it's much slower showing you guys than, than the way that it, it goes. The reason for the jig is when you run that hot bead of wax, uh, it makes the foundation very, very pliable. And it can just snap off one way or the other. And that's, that's no good. So what I do, I pop it in like that, I get my wax, I put some up here, if I need a little extra, go this way, tilt it that way, then I flip it, hold it with my index finger, back and forth, back and forth, 
then I will have my boxes nearby me to drop that into. And when it cools off, you end up with a nice slick weld and it's it's sturdy but it's still delicate as you can imagine it's still very delicate and if you store them in the heat the sun can melt them free so it's something that takes time and that you have to have room to have out but there you have it. So I will do all these and I'll stack them up and I'll probably keep them in here uh, against the wall or something because the, the season's coming on quickly. It's always nice to keep a hive tool handy. These little small ones are great for honey house use. They fit in your apron. Another thing you're going to want to have is an apron. Uh, you're going to end up getting wax on you for sure. Uh, you may end up getting wax on the floor if you're not waxing over your container. So you want to lay down some wax paper or cardboard or something like that so that you're not dripping all over your table or all over the floor. So that's it on this section. I will add some photos of finished products, some other things. I'm going to finish getting these supers ready, but that's it on getting your boxes prepared to go on the bees. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know. See you around.